Hello, everyone, and welcome to the world premiere announcement of another episode of the Stray Pixels podcast. I am your host, Colin Buchanan, back this week and joined by my co-host and uh, former host, uh, Nathan Mejia. How are you doing, Nate? Uh, doing pretty good. People are going to see a lot more of me soon because of reasons. 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 And we are joined by frequent co-host, Angelus Victor. How are you doing, Ryuji? <laughs> And I finally got to play the Splatoon, the Splatoon 3 more. I finished the main story, and I also played the Harvest Tele demo. Nate, Nate knows what I mean when it comes to that demo. Yeah. Um, you should be able to see my views on that demo here, I think, Monday? I'm hoping. Soon, TM. Yes. Soon, TM. TM. Soon, TM. Ah, so this week, um, we don't really have time for jokes and shit because we just kind of got bowled over. Um, and I'm including the week before this week as well, because I Mm -hmm. wasn't here and you guys talked, uh, you guys did a a retrospective episode. Uh, thank you. Thank you for putting that together. Uh, Nate, (laughs) uh, as I was, I was off dealing with things in, in, a, a halfway across the country yeah um so this week uh we're not really going to do individual topics we're just kind of gonna bounce back and forth talking about our favorite announcements from the last two weeks or so um and i'm going to start with one that i i uh, don't want to get forgotten um but it's all kind of a bittersweet one uh and that is assassin's creed red uh having been announced at ubisoft's assassin's creed presentation about Mm. a week and a half ago from the time we are recording this Mm. um so as a long-term fan of the series it's really exciting everybody's wanted uh the games to go to japan for for many many years now and i think that uh now now you know we're gonna everybody's gonna draw pretty obvious comparisons to ghost of tsushima so it's got some pretty big expectations to live up to especially considering i'm knee deep in valhalla right now and it's it's my favorite entry since rogue a million years ago um unfortunately um being ubisoft uh this comes with uh a whole bunch of of negative Mm. yeah frustration soft um (laughs) because apparently many staffers at uh ubisoft quebec which is the studio that is developing this game uh have asked not to work on it because uh the creative director is one of the people that was accused of harassment in 2020 and is still around because ubisoft has uh looked into him and said nope he's good we've 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 punished him enough yep whatever whatever they did um when I obviously think, this person should not still be working in the industry i think they lowered his pay and shoveled him to a, like a third studio for a little while then brought him back <laughs> which is unfortunately the ubisoft mo um yeah. obviously you know i i buy all these games used to the best of my ability um it's it's difficult to endorse really any of them given what we know about Ubisoft, mm-hmm. it's Man, so frustrating. I, I, just, I just because I just like buy if, Ubisoft for just dance, and that's it. <laughs> if they just if they just got rid of these people, there would mm-hmm. be no no issues that anybody's having. Surely there are plenty of talented people working at these studios that aren't, you know, serial abusers allegedly, but shrug i wanted to make sure that that got pointed out because it's a it's a really exciting thing there's a whole bunch of other assassin's creed news that we didn't get to cover here um Mm -hmm. including a side project that's going to be a prequel to valhalla that's coming out uh later this year and more news on whatever the hell assassin's creed infinity is which apparently is not a game but is a link between several games and where the the modern day plot is going to live from now on Okay, uh, okay. because they will not be cutting away to the modern day plot anymore in the main games to be uh, fair which those... i have mixed feelings about i don't i that was that was one of the things i really liked about those games was the connected yeah plot that they all had i was like but to be fair like how connected was the the future plot to the past plot anymore like i had hope with origins was was trying to reconnect it and then 
right with odyssey you get a time skip in the future arc and it's like oh okay and we're back to we're back to the apocalypse is about to happen again in valhalla yeah, yeah which yeah. is pr thematically appropriate but anyway that was my first one i'm going to go to ryuji for our second one <sighs> Well, if you, if you count the if you count all the farming games the direct had, like holy, there was Harvestella. Cozy game Earth players are eating. A wonderful life. Thank you, Mar. Like yeah. that game, I love it so much. And I just found out through, I I only found this out later through XC's press release. But like, they're gonna be adding same-sex marriage, which is amazing. <laughs> And you can mm -hmm. also be non-binary. And I believe Harvestella also includes a non-binary option. It does. It 100% does. Uh, you can play as a non-binary uh, uh, male or female. And no matter what you choose, the model that you can choose doesn't change. So you could be have he um, pronouns, but have a female model. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. In past games, the best way to like do it was select female and then dress herself to be sort of like a male. But now it, I'm mm -hmm. so glad that they're bringing this back. And what else? We we got so many indie games also during some like farming simulators. I wonder if it's a sign. Yeah. And then. Oh my! I get. I guess I should move on to the. To, should I talk about the Otome game now? Uh, if you uh, want we're, to. We're taking turns. Yeah, I, we're it, taking it, turns. It, it, this is this is a, a, a definitely a shotgun approach. I'm like, oh, talk, talk about Harvestella. Give us give us some detail on Harvestella because both of you guys played it and I did not. Oh, you didn't play Harvestella. I didn't have time. It's I also good. barely touched my switch. Yeah, well, I haven't played much of it, but it's pretty good, actually. Yeah. It, the... But, like, the demo is just a fraction of what the game offers, so I can't really give some concrete opinions. So here's the thing, though, Ryuji. That demo spans 15 days and up to Chapter 2 in the... or up to Chapter 2 in the story. That's at least four hours of gameplay. Yeah, there, that's true, but you can also ra run out of the 15 days uh -huh. if you decide to do other things than mm -hmm. the story. It depends on the play style. Yeah, it depends on your play style. However, I don't know if you noticed this, Ryuji, but I found little incentive to talk to the NPCs outside of like story reasons. I can sort of relate. So before we get much further in the weeds, Nate, can you explain Harvestella? Okay, so Harvestella is a not an unheard of concept of mixing and matching a farming sin with a JRPG. Um, this has been seen in other series, most notably Ruin Factory. Uh, but the difference here is that you're getting that Final Fantasy flavor. So crystals are all abound. They use Magisite um, uh, for special things. And the character designs are very clearly the same, not the same ones, but very similar to Bravely Default. And the oh, like the Final Fantasy Tactics games, so it, it's a whole new world, but familiar enough for people to get into it. Honestly, uh, if I were to describe Harvestella in one question, what what if the creators of Final Fantasy made Room Factory? Yes, that would be the best way to describe it. Honestly, yes, um, it, with, it a, the... with a bigger budget than any Rune Factory game has ever had. <laughs> uh... Ruin Factory 5 had a pretty big budget, didn't it? Yeah, well, it is. I, I don't know the I don't know the exact specifics though. That was uncalled yeah. for. <laughs> um but yeah. Uh Harvestella though, it has more focus on the RPG side. It's very first and foremost an RPG rather than a farming sim. It the farming sim is there and it's really well done, but it definitely feels like my focus was more on the dungeon part of the of the experience yeah well room factory does that too like but i have no idea how to compare the two otherwise because the game is not out yet so well with ruin factory like you can you can very obviously tell that um talking with npcs uh and giving gifts to npcs are a major part of the game mm, uh it yes. gives you more interactions and then you know certain things are locked behind it like um 
can't remember which one, but I know one of them was like, oh, you could upgrade your, your certain armor pieces here at this store only after you hit like one star or one heart, whatever oh, that one was. I think, I think I remember, but I also can't can't recall the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember if that was like one or two because um, uh, Ruin Factory has, has had a bunch of problems. Uh, first three games didn't let you choose sex at all. You were male. Uh, second mm -hmm. game is considered one of the worst ones. I don't know how five fits into it. I haven't really caught touched with the community um, since five came out. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But Harvestella is tapping into that, but definitely leaning into that RPG side uh, where the story is first and foremost, like there is, there is your normal JRPG story intro that can take about eh, 45 minutes. It's the first yes. two days. And that's all just tutorial is the first two days, which is un uncommon. But usually what happens is that you wake up at 7 a.m. They say, hey, here's some seeds. Here's how you do it. Here's how you farm. Um, you know, we'll talk to you tomorrow. And then you're free for the rest of the day. And Harvestella, they, it is a long scripted process with tidbits of story about the the main mm. story reason of the, what do they call it? The the dead season? Uh, quietus. The quietus. The quietus, yes. Where, you, you know, it's it's not like, oh, it's winter, so you have plants died. It's, oh, all life on this, at least in this area, is just gone. It's dead. Um, Worse than the storm. Yeah. And it, and it happens every, every season, which is story reasons of don't crop, don't try to make your crowds go between seasons because they'll just die automatically. <laughs> yeah, I'm that. Not, wow. Now I need to play more to the demo because I because I have been kind of busy as well. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think I played like the first two <laughs> days and just had to do some other things. Yeah, it 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 opens up. It, you you get a little bit of a taste of who the um the main bad guys are called omens supposedly. Well, I'd say supposedly because I haven't, because you don't get too much of it, but they give you a little bit about them. Uh, you can have a party, which is very Final Fantasy, where in Ruin Factory, you can kind of like bring a, a monster buddy or two with you. <laughs> and then otherwise you're by yourself. Um, and, and yeah, I, otherwise I can keep going on about Harvestella. <laughs> the we the weirdest thing to me about Harvestella is mm -hmm. that it is a Switch console exclusive. Yes, I, mean, I think it's timed. I think it's timed, yes. Square Enix does usually do a lot of timed stuff. I mean, Triangle Strategy was announced for PC uh, like shortly after the Direct, I want to say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it was announced in conjunction with... Ver oh, I remember. It was it announced with that various Daylight game, which... <laughs> I might I add, at the time we're recording, Various Day Life has a mostly negative rating on Steam. I mean, at this point, I think Various Day Life's uh, legacy is just going to be, wow, that's a terrible goddamn name. And the, the, person, the person who names games mm -hmm. at Square Enix is clearly just going mad with power. Uh, yeah. Yeah, also, they yeah. use the same font for the logo. What the heck? It's um... I do not see anything about it being a timed exclusive. It is releasing on PCs at some point, but it is not releasing on Xbox or PlayStation. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, well, that that sort of checks out. It's yeah. just strange because, like, you never... any Anytime Square Enix has an exclusive, you basically always assume it's going to be a PlayStation exclusive. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. Especially given all the rumors that went around of, like, them being the big company Sony was going to buy off early or buy up earlier this year. Yeah. Um but that's weird to me. I guess we'll have to see how it turns out. Hopefully that means that the game is like going to be well optimized for the Switch. Mm -hmm. I, I will say that of all the demo it will it played very well. Uh, yeah. Same here. I did not encounter any issues with it. Okay. Yeah, mostly because it's um sectioned off. So you go from town loading screen uh world map okay so we then to dungeon. So that that thing that happened in room factory 5 won't repeat itself yes yes room factory 5 won't repeat itself <laughs> um any more to say about harvestella 
not really we need to wait for the game to release and then maybe we can do a whole episode about it oh i'm i'm down for that it is nate's turn it is my turn and yeah. we usually mentioned this um however I, I think it was very interesting and everything and it's just the game that's very near and dear to my childhood it's the first game i ever spent 24 hours playing um during a summer break when i was in middle school Wonderful life, yes. yes. Did you play the GameCube version or the re or the remastered, better PS2 version? I've only played the GameCube version. I have that PS2 version on PS4, um, but I have that GameCube version. And the reason I think why they decided to re-release it along, well, as well as Mineral you know, Friends of Mellow Town, is that these were these were Nintendo exclusives for a long time. Hmm. Um. Uh, like I like Riju said, a wonderful life uh, came out with was it a more wonderful life or no? A, just a wonderful life special, more wonderful yeah, life, another wonderful life, wonderful life. special yeah. edition because yeah, yeah. Natsume did, just decided to. In fact, it's even the same logo. Natsume just slapped a special edition there yeah. and released for the PS2, and yeah. I believe that version added a new merit like made one of the previously uh like candidates now marriageable yeah it was either lumina or uh the archaeologist chick um mm -hmm. which is is funny because this um forget me not valley which is where the main game takes place already kind of jumped from the gamecube and went to the ds and harvest moon ds except it was a weird alternate universe mm-hmm um, but it's cool to see it come back uh, with all of its things because it's the only Harvest Moon that you can actually beat, and that there is an end state, end game, and yeah, and it's also I, I think correct me if I'm wrong. It's the first Harvest Moon that allowed you to actually see your child as a teen, like, yes. and and your child could like go beyond the child stage. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the teen stage did did come back in a new beginning, but. Yeah. It it found its it like it was born in a like a wonderful life. Pretty yeah. sure of that. Yes, it was started in a wonderful life because you go from yourself as a young adult coming back to the Forget Me Not Valley to run your father's farm up into old age, where the trailer shows the main character with full white on hair and then yes. look, <laughs> look at the love interest. And I'm like, why did her model not change that much? Honestly, I, I, you you might find this interesting, but in the English broadcast, it showed a male model, right? Yes, it showed a male model. For the Japanese broadcast, they went with the female model, and the changes between the models are more apparent, I want to say. Mm -hmm. which was, I don't know why they decided that, but okay. I, I think it was because uh, here in the West, people probably played uh, A Wonderful Life over Another Wonderful Life, which back then, uh, for some reason, the gender there were two gendered games rather than one game you choose your gender. Oh, yeah. Th this was when they split between versions, the gender one to pick. I remember now. Yep, yep. Because it happened with Friends of Mineral Town, which I believe that because it was a Game Boy Advance game, uh, which tied into A Wonderful Life on the GameCube. Mm -hmm. Because you could actually get the 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 mineral town and marriage candidates over into Forget Me Not Valley if you connected the Game Boy Advance to them to the GameCube while playing. So yes, I did that. <laughs> and funny fact, you can actually end the game after the first year if you marry one of those marriage candidates because they have they make you move to Mineral Town. Yes, I remember that, mm -hmm. and it's also. I want to I want to say it's not the first but it it's also the first harvest moon that I found out as a kid that you can actually get divorced like mm. that it, it, it can happen yeah. but like it's not like you can just go go, go through a procedure menu or anything yeah, it's more yeah. like if your if your spouse gets like zero hearts which is really like you really have to try to get them to zero hearts yeah they will divorce with you say like you don't care about us anymore and if yeah. you have a child they'll take that away <laughs> like and guilt trip the heck out of, out of you yeah yeah no and and for people who don't know uh doing that is pretty much you have to give them gifts they hate constantly um, and not talk to them outside of those gifts. So it, it's very hard to do. 
Um, yeah, there's... you need to, to try, which I which I suppose that I suppose it's why it guilt trips you so much. Yeah, yeah, because because you you had to forcibly break it off, essentially. Um, but yeah, no, I'm excited to see that come back. I'm excited uh, to see if that lifts off the switch. I don't remember if they said whether or not it will. Um, but I don't I, see. I it. don't remember either. Yeah, but I don't. Announced. But I don't see them not lifting it it off the switch after probably a year. Yeah, I, I can see a PC <clears> port, <throat> especially because it's Xseed, and Xseed is very known for bringing their games to PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. especially now, especially with the Steam Deck. I think they're all, all their games have been confirmed for Steam Deck pretty much, except for the Trails games, which is weird. Yeah. Now, I suppose... Uh, I, can can I we suppose not talk about they're... farming now? Uh, can I rejoin the conversation? Uh, uh, I think we have <laughs> one more farming sim, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, you can come back if you want. I want to talk about Yakuza Ishin. Okay, ah, see. yes. I also I wanted to talk about that, but I, I or really you mean bring it up. like a dragon Ishin because Shut up. <laughs> or for being pedantic, Ryu Gagotoku Ishin. Exclamation <laughs> <laughs> point. Exclamation points. Uh, no, yeah, go go off about this because I'm excited for it. So, um, basically, uh, in between all of the games that we got in uh, in the United States, there were uh, two spinoff Yakuza games, like now like a Dragon games, but I'm just I'm gonna call it Yakuza till the day I die. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't change branding eight games in is all i'm saying <laughs> um but in between all these other games they created two spinoff games that never made it here and both times they were the first games that they developed for brand new generations of consoles yeah um so ishin was the uh was a launch title for the playstation 4 that yeah. never made it here uh, and that is a spinoff of the Yakuza games that is set in the uh, the Edo period, yeah. starring basically proxies of the characters from Yakuza. So you're basically meant to like understand that these familiar characters are basically being picked up and plucked into a different time period, and they're telling a story using that concept uh, that just takes place in a very different time period from the modern day games. Mm -hmm. Neither of these games ever made it over to the States. Uh, they they both came out in a time when uh, interest in this series had severely waned yeah. um, because uh, the, the other one, Kenzan, was uh, I think a launch title for the PS3. Yeah. And we were frankly lucky that we even got Yakuza 3 after after the extremely uh <laughs> tepid launch of the first two games on ps2 yep um so we were we were never going to get a spin-off because it was never going to do well and, and uh kenzan came out right before the the huge renaissance of of the yakuza games outside of japan that happened when yakuza zero came out yep and basically ever since then it's been in this situation where it's like the trails games where there's these these games that didn't get localized because the series wasn't popular enough to justify it at the time mm -hmm. but now we're just kind of missing them because the, the localization team has their hands full trying to you know barely keep up with the newer releases mm -hmm. um now that we are doing worldwide releases for the main games i don't know if that changes but regardless i'm really excited about this uh mm. the trailer was full of samurai and and revolver pistols and it looks really exciting they're updating the story in this remake to uh focus more heavily on characters that were in mm -hmm. uh yakuza 6 0 and 7 yep. being that those were uh they, those were all fairly popular in the united states uh and just anywhere outside of japan and a lot of the characters that were included in the uh original version of the game are kind of unrecognizable unless you very recently played yakuza 3 4 and 5 um yeah. which you might have because the collection just came out uh but by just came out i do mean that it's been out for two years yeah yeah um but this is really exciting this is really cool that like they're they're taking the time to remake the thing mm -hmm. uh and update it 
with with more recognizable with a more recognizable cast um it's not getting a dub but honestly i think i'm okay with that like as good as the dubs for judgment lost judgment and yakuza 7 are i do kind of feel like there is something lost if you don't play these games in japanese Mm -hmm. um because i think that it it's just that so entrenched in that culture uh that you're right that there is just that little bit of, of loss usually in translation it's there there's like an intensity uh to a lot of the japanese performances that just doesn't quite carry over into the english ones and i have nothing against the english voice actors they do a splendid job it's just it kind of reminds me of the first time that i watched a uh a dub of like a moe show and the english voice actresses just could not like mm-hmm. produce sounds that made sense coming out of the characters that they were portraying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like eventually they got better, but I don't know. I'm really yeah. excited for this though. No, I'm I... really ex- excited for it too, especially reading up on it. Apparently, um the Kiryu, the Kiryu character model is actually supposed to be uh an actual person from Japanese history. Yeah, I believe I, I forgot. I forgot its name. <laughs> I, it's remember not the, Misashi, I remember but... the store name, but I don't remember the its owner. My God! Yeah, let me see. Oh, I remember Sakamoto Ryoma. Yes, he is Sakamoto Ryoma, who is a a very prominent historical figure. So it yeah, it also adds on that this is very much a Japanese period piece. Um. Which, you know, the time period is already given away, you know, and, and Japan and China seem to love this mythologization of their own history. Where... Ah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, go, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> uh, where, you know, they, they like to add in this this bit of fantastical elements to real events. So it, it makes more sense to have it in Japanese, especially in that period mm-hmm. where um, heavy westernization was starting to come over you know and, and it's very clear when you see that trailer come up and the and it's divided into what we would think of traditional third word japan to the more like ritzy mansions and stuff mm-hmm. and how deep that segregation was and, and kind of that mindset of the west coming in it's actually even kind of funny that they're separated uh vertically east and west <laughs> this series is weird i can't i can't believe i can't believe that we got the fucking uh fist of the north star spin-off game <laughs> yeah. but we didn't get oh, yes, these yeah um, they even did the meme like you yeah, are like, already drunk <laughs> um all i want now like obviously i want kenzon eventually but yeah. There's there's a part of me that really wants to see them finally remaster Dead Souls because I think that it would be much more well received now than it was at the time on the PlayStation 3 when this series was completely irrelevant and it was just a clumsy attempt to try and make Yakuza take off in the West by yeah. putting guns in it. <laughs> yeah, because Yakuza's Dead Souls, even like mentioning that, that, that gets... That's a hot topic for the community because <laughs> uh, people either like it and say it just came out at a bad time, like you stated, or they just hate it. It's not a fantastic game, but it's like <laughs> it's like a lost entry now, and that's weird. Oh, yeah. It, it, it is weird because I remember used to see it all the time at GameStop, and then it just faded from existence. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, Ryuji, that's your enough, turn that's again. That's enough Yakuza work now. How, how about the game where you can date the, the periodic table? <laughs> Wait, oh is that what that is? <laughs> that yes. what it is? I, like, we only have a few minutes for before we end this part, but I want to talk about a game from Square Enix that was announced exclusively on the Japanese Nintendo Direct, and it's called Elements with Emotions. And initially, and I kid you not, I was just like, oh, hey, Square Enix is making an, a, like, 
bonding automatic visual novel thing i get i guess i'll ju i'll just report on it and then the thing just managed to like become the most liked tweet in all of noisy pixels announcements combined like i think it got almost 10,000 likes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i believe the reason is it's because square enix proudly proclaimed that it would have 45 routes and 90 endings but for wow. only four, only four base characters at launch, and the other six will be DLC. But yes, the ten characters of the game are based off elements of the periodic table. OMG, a hit tweet. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just... OMG, a hit tweet. Oh my. And I believe the elements. Oh, I do have it. Ah. Yeah, I, 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 I am can, on I your. Still... I am on your uh, article. <laughs> <Free easy. laughs> so, so we have sulfur, chlorine, fluorine, iron, lithium, nitrogen, beryllium, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and that's it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everyone went gaga for lithium. Yeah, man. If if hydrogen and oxygen get together and make a baby, would that make water? <laughs> well, no, because we need two hydrogen. Yeah, you need and, to... and that gets into fanfic territory. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean... That, maybe that on was... the fan disc, right? Maybe on the fan disc. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It's And it's apparently coming out for Nintendo Switch and mobile next year. Join our community Discord server. Yes. <laughs> uh, but by the way, did they ever say yes or no on an English release on that game? No, there, there has been like no word about our English release, but I mean, it is it, it is apparently a game that Square Enix is collaborating with Elements Garden in order to do the soundtrack. So I have no idea if this game will ever come west. Oh. The fact that it only got uh, uh, like, and that's also, and that also applies to a lot of the games we talked about here. Like, if you watch the Japanese broadcast, they all have defined release dates, whereas the Western releases are, like, just a bit later, but they don't yeah. have concrete dates. Wonderful Life, for instance, in Japan, it will come out in, on January 28th. Oh, I think okay. it was January 28th. I don't remember. I, I, need to, I need to recall that, so don't quote yeah. me on that. Yeah, yeah. But, but... Like, I, I, remember, I remember like all of them having at least a more concrete date than just a season, as it was in the Western broadcast. Well, it, it, there are quite a few games that just said 2023. Yeah, I, that, adding those to our spreadsheet was kind of embarrassing, because I was like, well, I made a 2023 page, but we're going to have to go through and move a bunch of shit later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's gonna take a while. Well, it has to get documented somehow, or else it's gonna get forgotten about. And God knows, Azario doesn't doesn't have the patience to to keep the spreadsheet going. Okay, so mm -hmm. I just I just checked, and yes, Wonderful Life will come in Japan January twenty six. Whereas for the West, I believe we only we only got I think a either a spring or a summer release. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. And then for Room Factory, Room Factory like Tree Special, they're gonna they're gonna release it in spring in Japan. But for the West, I think we got a summer kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was something like that, which makes sense because even Room Factory Four Special uh, came out like two to three months after the Japanese uh, release. Yeah, it's. It's kind of a trend with Marvelous games, as far as I know. They always released in Japan, like, early. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's because they wait to give Xseed the, the full version, or uh, Xseed is finalizing their translation. Uh, yeah, that, it makes sense. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how big Xseed's localization team is, but I assume it takes a while, especially oh, yeah. since... I think I remember a long time ago during their localization blogs is that they... They actually told people like, "Why does the story of seasons three of times not have any DLC?" And then they mentioned that like the DLC alone was like more than a hundred thousand words. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it would be it would be like too much for mm -hmm. them to like currently do right now because I think it was during their early days. Yeah, yeah. But th that's a story for another time because we're running out of time in this. Part. We are running out of time. Nate, you're up. Go. 
Oh, uh, 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 no, I actually have a website open up. Uh, actually, the the one that I found kind of strange after that, uh, and I'm sure people will really care about uh, too, was that Tales of Symphonia is getting a remaster out. Uh, Boo! Oh, yeah. Boo! Runny, <laughs> runny at 30 Boo! FPS. You don't be, be getting your rent at 60, but... Why? This is so... No one asked for this. No <laughs> one asked for this. This is... This is literally a worse remaster than the last time they did it. Because the last time they did it, I know a lot of people don't like Dawn of the New World, but it yeah. came with it at least. Yeah. And and like, yes, it still ran at the shitty frame rate that, that everybody's pissed about. Yeah. But like, this is, I don't understand how we're doing this again, but worse the second time. Because okay. a lot of people already complained that that, for, that Tales of Symphonia Chronicles also was based on the PS2 version that ran oh. at 30 FPS instead of the 60 that the original GameCube version was at. Mm. So the fact that we're doing this all over again, I love Tales. Don't buy this game. Uh, Don't buy this game. That being said, I, I'm pretty ambivalent towards it. Uh, it was just kind of interesting to see that they're doing it again. Uh I don't I don't know that Symphonia nostalgia is quite as quite as big as they are uh portending I, I mean it's there it's it was a lot of a lot of people's first tales game because the only thing to go back before that is like destiny and um fantasia and fantasia and eternia and, um, and eternia and I get that, but I also think that a lot of people that are still interested in the Tales games have played several of them since then, and most people have moved on to having a different favorite, be it mm -hmm. Dawn of the Abyss or Vesperia or Shilia or Bristeria. Like... Or Rise, because, you know, that's... that's Did I say Dawn of the Abyss, modern. Tales of the Abyss? Yeah, you said Dawn of the Abyss, yeah. Whoop. I just, I don't get it. I don't get why they're doing this. I don't get, like, if they were going to do it, they could have at least fixed it to run at the proper frame rate instead of making a PlayStation 2 game run at literally 30 frames per second on a PS5, despite the fact that all they did was improve the textures. And I, I put improve in air quotes uh, because they just changed the lighting on the textures. Did they? Mm, we would talk it, more. It but... still looks like a PlayStation 3 game. That's all I'm saying. It still looks like a PS2 game that was that was bumped up to HD resolution for PS3. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not wrong. You're not wrong, yeah. So, on that note, unless anybody has any parting shots to take here. Uh, no, because, well, on Tales, uh, no. I, I, don't, I don't care okay. about Symphonia enough. Okay, then we will be right back. Hoggers! Oh my god, you did you did not just Yeah, I took Bailey's catchphrase. <sighs> no, Bailey's catchphrase is yo puggers. <laughs> yeah, you're right, it is yo puggers. Said it exactly that way. Puggers, puggers? <laughs> you, it it has to be an absurdly enunciated question. You have to your your voice has to go up so far. Yeah. yeah puggers. Yeah. Puggers. Okay. Sad, anyway, sad. we're 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 not cutting that. Um, that's all. That's all going into the episode. Uh, uh, w. It's, w. It's it's my turn. It's my turn. Okay. What are you talking about? It's my turn, and I want to talk about theater rhythm. Ah yes. I'm so excited. To quote, uh, this is a quote from from Colin to those who wonder. People said Col uh, People said like he said like anyone can take this over my cold dead body. Over my cold dead body, and that includes Bailey, who's going to be the person <laughs> who fights me the hardest on it. Um. <laughs> Which is like funny because because Bailey, I don't really see as like a rhythm game guy. No, but Bailey, I think has hundred percent experted uh, melody of memory. Oh, yes, 
I, I think I think that happened. Yes, I'm fairly certain. Um, but he can he can he can pry it out of my out of my cold dead hands. If someone else reviews this game, uh, assume that either I died or I've already put out a hit on on Bailey uh, <laughs> for 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 having the nerve. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So uh theater rhythm final bar line uh so basically this is this is a third version of the uh original theater rhythm final fantasy that came out on the mm -hmm. nintendo 3ds um i which technically I, it's the fourth version um which i'm very it, surprised how they're gonna do the it without a touch screen because that I mean, was one of its main points well okay let me get to it even more mm -hmm. technically it's the fifth version so mm -hmm. the the original game it came out uh for the 3ds and then uh there was a port of it that was released for ios and android mm -hmm. uh it is a it is free to download but the free download only comes with two songs and all of the rest of them have to be purchased a la carte but there are a lot more than were in the original game mm -hmm. all of these songs were eventually compiled into theater rhythm final fantasy curtain call uh, which was basically a game of the year version that included hundreds literally hundreds of songs in the base game and then also had uh, mm -hmm. i think another 40 as dlc for a dollar a piece um and then following curtain call the game got an arcade port um which i've played mm -hmm many times now at, at conventions and such it's very fun and i believe that that arcade port is what is being turned into uh final bar line coming out for uh the switch and playstation consoles mm -hmm. um so effectively we we go uh from using the touchscreen uh to using the touchscreen and the buttons as you mm -hmm. can do in curtain call because the uh, curtain call added the, the option of of uh, pressing the buttons in time yeah. rather than being forced to use the touch screen. I yeah. believe this is going to move to just the buttons, which is fine by me. That's how the arcade game plays. It feels fine. Um, and I feel like I, I, I got really comfortable using the buttons in curtain call because the, especially on the harder tracks, the stylus is a little bit difficult to keep full control of because mm -hmm. you're going so quickly. Um, but this is going to have 500 songs in it. <laughs> Uh, well, okay. Correction: almost 400 in the base game. The rest of all the are all DLC, which ah. there's like 15 packages of that. Yes, yes. But it it's it's kind of a stark contrast to how uh, comparatively limited Melody of Memory was. I think Melody of Memory had something like 80 songs in it. Yeah, because there. it and, was yeah. Kingdom Hearts first and foremost. So well, well, yes, and it also very clearly the production value, like for each song, was higher because they were creating distinct levels that went with the songs, yeah. um, or at least like that went with like certain sets of songs. Mm -hmm. um, but it was frustrating to me that Kate, that Melody of Memory did not get any post-launch support. Mm -hmm. um, considering how much DLC there had been for Theater Rhythm Curtain Call, and obviously Melody of Memory is basically Theater Rhythm Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for this game. I am really hyped to see what they do with this idea next, because Curtain Call was already such a huge expansion of the original concept, yeah. and included basically all of the characters from all of the games. Uh, but I'm really excited to to be able to jump back into this and just let it devour all of my free time mm. um mm. while i'm the, the here... like, make sure make sure you don't take like two weeks to review it like god no <laughs> obviously so yeah, the obviously thing about not. the the stories of these games is that they can be completed extremely quickly um mm -hmm. the idea is you get through the story and then you just go and play score attack for for dozens of hours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so it, it's 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 relatively fast to finish whatever the the story mode is uh and then there's basically just like uh procedurally generated story from then on that just creates playlists of songs for you to get through and challenges that go with those songs uh or at least that's how it went in curtain call i would have to imagine that this is going to be pretty similar and i'm not going to exactly need to play you know every single song to get a review out it's just going to need to be how does this game feel how's the selection Mm -hmm. and th that's that's kind of it but i'm hyped nonetheless while i'm here i also want to point out that we got a release date for crisis core reunion in the nintendo direct yeah yeah uh that was that Even was unexpected then, that was only in the japanese direct no it wasn't it was in the english one 
Oh, it, it also got it because the because <laughs> like the pacing between the directs was very different, and I remember seeing that. But like, um, so it got a it easier. got a thirty second spot in the direct, and then later that day, Square Enix posted like I think a two and a half minute trailer that gave uh more details and more gameplay footage. But the thirty mm-hmm. second spot in the Nintendo Direct revealed the release date, which is December thirteenth. Yeah, at least it's this year and not like January of next year, so that's a win. Uh, and if uh, remasters didn't count for uh, end of the year lists, <laughs> uh, you can probably be pretty confident that this would be my game of the year for this year, but unfortunately, <laughs> that's going to be fun. I gave out multiple tens this year. Yeah, yeah. But, but nobody has ever given a one. What? But I've I've given one. What the hell are you talking about? Nate has very famously year, given a one this year. No oh, this two. year. Yeah, Nate, you didn't even comment year. on the thing that I sent you that I, or that I that I tagged you in. Oh, that... the new outbreak game is being kickstarted. Yeah, <laughs> I I oh, try to forget those games fun. exist. And well, they exist we are on going to platforms. torment you with them forever because it amuses us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the NP way. Uh. All right, Ryuji, you're up. Yeah. Yes, yes, because we we've got Pikmin four for like a blip of a second. <laughs> yeah. That was so funny. Miyamoto comes on screen and he's like, "Hey, everybody, play this game that we released like literally a year ago that nobody remembers exists, but because otherwise we're gonna have Niantic shut it down like they did the Harry Potter game. No one gave a crap about. Oh, yeah. and also we're working on Pikmin four. Yeah. Next yep. year." Yeah, that that was something, <laughs> and I mean, we barely got anything. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah. got very little, but I guess yeah. like you know what to expect. It's Pikmin. Yeah. It's, okay, it's wait, Pikmin. but I actually want to ask because you're probably more familiar with it, Colin. Does Pikmin Four count as being development hell? Because I think it was like it's... no, it oh. was. Th- this is the first time we've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. This no, is the first time we've I think heard. I remember. Like it, it had some rumors like for years now before they died out. I don't. I mean, remember. rumors don't really count as being in development hell. Yeah. Um. You you generally you have to have been announced. Yeah. Um. It, like if we hear extremely credible rumors from many sources, and it was like many years ago, that might count. But like, keep in mind that, uh, Kingdom Hearts Three was rumored to be in development like five years before it was officially announced mm-hmm. yes that, that, um, that, that makes sense so you know take that with a grain of salt generally mm-hmm. speaking the phrase development hell only applies to games that have been announced uh, and the yeah. obvious example that was completely absent from all of the presentations nintendo was at over the last couple of weeks is metroid prime 4 yeah. um yeah, which is which is the new Shin Megami Tensei Five in terms of this is a game y'all announced a million years ago and then didn't say anything about. Uh, yeah. Where is it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it is is probably languishing somewhere in Retro Studio. Yeah, it was his basement. Yeah, last we heard, it was just restarting. Okay, cool. Okay, that's <laughs> something. Yeah, and ex- then... expect in two weeks' time. Uh, the next uh the switch 2 announcement with metroid prime 4 being a uh yes Spe- speaking of announcements like i i actually made a, a bingo card before the direct started i actually expected to see something about mario party 11 or at least something but Eh, I don't think happen. we're getting a Mario Party 11. I think no. that we're going we we might get a Super Mario Party 2 uh but I don't think that they're going to back going going to go back to the old numbers. Mm-hmm. Um then nin- like you will if you look back Mario Party is the only uh Nintendo franchise that tends to have numbers associated with it and yeah. that stopped after the Wii. Yeah. yeah. We um, had the spin-offs and all that. Because no other no other long-running Nintendo franchise is still numbered. Um mm-hmm. so I I think that I, I don't think that we're getting a Mario Party 11. I think it's much more likely that we'll get a Super Mario Party 2, and I think that it's also likely that it's also going to be uh another lazy cash grab. 
quite hey, frankly. At least we got, at least I got one thing in my bingo chart, a new mainline Fire Emblem game. It's oh, coming. Yeah. Fire okay. Emblem Switch. Fire yeah. Emblem Engage. Hopefully Emblem. it's better than Three Houses. Uh, I don't know. I like the, the footage of it. It, I love the aesthetic of this game. I love that it reminds me a lot of um, Toki Mirage Sessions. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. As long as I'm not seeing the weapon triangle, I just frankly am not interested because Three Houses did not feel interesting to play. Mm -hmm. um, it, felt, it felt like bashing chess pieces together without any rhyme or reason. Uh, and I dropped it. So yeah. I, I I still say that later you get into that game that it is still there, just in a different, a completely different form, and it, it is a little more optional. What? I, by the way, what did you think of the protagonist that is literally blue hair and red hair? That's why I called him Switch Kun, because it's the colors of the Joy Cons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, like I said, I like the aesthetic. I kind of wonder if this is the um the game that we heard like vague unsubstantiated rumors about them making a tokyo mirage sessions 2 way Actually, back just yeah, just yeah, based it... on the aesthetic because yeah. like let's be clear we are never getting a tokyo mirage sessions 2 no we were never intended to get a um, tokyo mirage sessions 2 it was a flash in the plan yeah, it's, one it's off just, game if if anything encore encore was like the final hurrah they did to like just yank it off the wii u well I'm it's not even it's not even just that it was a one-off game. It's that this game flopped on its original release on the Wii U and then mm -hmm. flopped even harder on the Switch. Uh, you, you know what would have what would have not made it flop though? What? Is if they didn't take away the vagina bones. <laughs> My god. They already I took heard. away the vagina bones. But they but if they put them back in. Oh. Just just <laughs> open her up and put those bones right yeah, back well, in, but... baby. <laughs> I think, I think like, the main I can, reason can... the Switch version flopped even harder is because they they didn't even bother to like for the Japanese Switch release they used the censored Wii U release even in Japan which made people angry. I don't I don't think that that was the only reason. I think that the, this is this is something that I could go on at length about. So I don't want to talk about it here. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why Tokyo Mirage Sessions flopped as hard as it did, uh, and we're we're gonna put a pin in that for another time. Because I don't want to, I don't want to go on and on here, uh, especially because it is Nate's turn. My turn. Uh, it is my turn, and you know what we we, we talk about it is a game. I don't think anybody really, really noticed, and it kind of felt like it was like a stealth announcement. But what about Suicode in one and two remastered, man? Oh, that was in the that was in the Konami broadcast. Yes. Yeah, I heard. I heard. My, I know a close friend who's a huge fan. They said they cried a lot when when they got announced. Mm -hmm. When was uh, the last time anyone said, "Wow, thanks, Konami"? Uh... <laughs> was it when NGS Although... Five came out? I'm pretty sure that was it. No. Funny you say that. A lot of people booed the like. Some people are like, "Boo! Where's my Silent Hill remake, Konami?" And well. It's, it's, I think that happened. I think that a lot of people are excited to have to have Suikoden back. Um, mm -hmm. I'm waiting for the news of how they're going to fuck it up. <laughs> it's uh, it maybe charging happen. full price for the game and then making you pay a dollar every time you recruit a character. I don't know. It's Konami. They 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 do that. <laughs> Actually, you have to play Master Duel to get access to the characters. <laughs> uh, or the new Cross Duel. <laughs> Speaking of, did you play the new Cross Duel Gacha game, Colin? No, it... I have not played it yet. Is it out? I didn't know it was out. Yeah, it is out. It's Shadow oh. Drop on the Play Store. I should have. Oh. I should have. If I had known that it was out, I would have reviewed it. Um, yeah, yeah. Because God so... knows that got me traction. That's so weird, though. That Master Duel just came out last year. So Cross yeah. Duel is different. Uh, also, Master Duel came out this year. Oh, God. Year? Yeah, beginning of this yes. year, right? Yes. Okay, that's why uh, cross like duel is a different format. Cross duel is an entirely different way of doing things. Master duel is explicitly intended to uh, replicate the tabletop experience. Uh -huh. It doesn't because it's inexplicably best of one, uh, a format <laughs> everyone hates, yeah. uh, and that means that the the uh, the format of the game and the current meta is completely different from uh, the the actual paper play meta. But anyway, oh, wow. uh, Suikoden. Um, 
this is really cool. I I'm I'm really I'm really mm -hmm. interested to see if uh, if they do manage to fuck this up um because it seems like it should be an easy home run, but yeah. it is Konami and Konami is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm hopeful because like a bunch of the developers have been saying, "Oh, we would really love to make more Suikoden." Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of thinking like, "Oh, maybe this is them testing the waters by releasing something cheap like a remaster." Yeah. Um because obviously Konami doesn't really do full scale t console games, and it seems like when they do, they want it to be something like a Metal Gear game, uh, where it's got you know a big budget that's expected to make back a, back a bunch of money, or yeah. it's like a Contra Rogue Core where they spent five dollars on the development and it's a cheap piece of garbage that they shuffle out so that they can still call themselves a video game company, uh, as opposed to a pachinko company. Yeah, yeah. And and a pachinko and trading card game company, excuse me. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> you know, kind of the same things, aren't they? <laughs> what is, what are what are trading card games if not real life gotcha puns? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's, um, it's gotcha, but you you get paper, actual paper of a PNG. Yeah. So I I want I want this to be I want this to be good we'll have to see there's a solid chance that they just shove it out with no promotion and then complain when it doesn't sell well yeah but you know there's a light there's a light we can follow it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can Maybe. finally get more people to play these games that uh the most recent platform that they were available on before this was the ps vita oh yeah 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 these games it's been a long time since konami has made a game I would I would really like to see a uh, a switch remaster of the DS Suikoden game that everybody forgets exists because oh, yeah. uh, I think that it's kind of a forgotten gem that got really heavily overlooked. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called To Your Christ. I really like that game. But anyway, hey. um, I'm, go I'm going to actually ask Nate a little question because it asked, it was also. The first Splatfest on Splatoon 3 is gonna happen, the post release. And I wanted to know what kind of team did you want to? <laughs> did, did, did I end up I'm gonna end up choosing? I'm I'm gonna end up choosing uh fun. I I actually chose Team Gear because Shiver <laughs> actually Shiver Shiver oddly made a valid point on why you should choose gear. I don't know why. I mean I guess I guess that means I'm probably big man. Ah yes, big man, and then Rip Fry, who who thinks she can eat a a sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> that that that's so. I actually curious if you, if you guys want to go like if you're yeah. watching this on YouTube, tell us in the comments what team are you gonna go. So if we're gonna be rivals or I don't know friends. Right. I'm team buy a different game. I'm team buy a game that they didn't already launch four years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have no Nintendo bridges for me to burn anymore, so I can mm. say what I want. <laughs> you, I mean, uh, if you want to get attacked by the Nintendo ninjas, man, but go ahead. Yeah, I have um, made I have made no secret of the fact that I am not a fan of Nintendo on this podcast. If it was going to happen, it would have happened already. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is which is why I think even adding Swimsuit DLC won't make you like Xenoblade Lake Chronicles Three. No, bad game. It's a shame. It's a shame. It's such a bad game. Uh, you know what? Hopefully, won't be a bad game. Front Mission Remake. Ah, yeah. we finally saw more footage. Um, it it got announced months ago for a release this year, and then yeah. they said absolutely fuck all about it for for months uh and finally we got a another confirmation that it's coming out in november we don't have a we don't have a concrete date yet for some reason which kind of makes me think this isn't getting a physical but it's it's uh we did get a confirmation that front mission mm -hmm. 3 is also getting remade which yeah. is kind of impressive it, it makes me wonder if they're doing uh uh kind of kind of asset reuse in order to get all these games out uh, because I don't know, I don't know how well this is going to sell. I think that this is this is going to be a very niche release, but yeah. nonetheless, I am extremely excited to fight more giant robots against each other in tactical, brutal combat. Because yes. uh, yeah, I think yeah, that Front, Front Mission, Mission is actually. one of those series that that is is lost to time, but could be really big if people remembered that it existed. 
Speaking of games, I'm surprised we didn't get like one of the things that I put in my bingo chart. I'm surprised they didn't mention anything about Advance Wars' new release date because it got postponed. But yeah, yeah. new release we're, date. We're not gonna get that until after the war in Ukraine ends, which right now that doesn't look to be anytime soon. Um, well, so Russia's on the. This is about to go on a tangent, but Russia's on the retreat. I don't. I don't know. I don't know that that's a fair thing to say um that that were that they're still waiting at this point because you know there's there's other wars happening in the world right now i understand that the original release was just unfortunate timing Mm -hmm. um but at this point i don't know why they're still sitting on this game uh especially we're about to get call of duty modern warfare 2 you know i mean yeah the only reason why they 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 stopped is because i think um, for a while there, Americans uh, were were kind of like clutching their pearls about the war in Ukraine. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of us still are. But at the same time, if if Activision's going to push out Call of Duty while this is still happening, I frankly don't see any reason why Advance Wars needs to keep getting held back, especially since the, for months now it's it's like Russia has been losing to a mimetic extent like yeah. people on twitter are dunking on russia for losing a land war against a country as small as ukraine mm-hmm. <laughs> as comparatively small i should say yeah, yeah comparatively um small. so yes ukraine is is devastated unfortunately but also tactically speaking they've been outdoing russia this this entire time they actually recently started handing uh handing out surrender cards supposedly to russian soldiers giving them giving them clemency if they want to return home (laughs) which is understandable because i'm sure a lot of those soldiers that are actually in the war don't want to be there anymore uh because they know that they're losing uh and it's just the people that are not participating that are so convinced that this this is a good idea Mm. anyway anyway we just got demonetized so let's move on to i want i want to talk about master master detective archives rain code because the new danganronpa oh yeah that was a game where i didn't even know about it and i looked up i was like oh yeah this is danganronpa again i'm hyped for it It my name's on the list it looks it looks real good um i'm tenderly curious to see how it's going to go um, because mm-hmm. Danganronpa itself, while was uh, while it was a great series, there was cracks in the writing. Uh, yes, there's a lot of plot holes, and then on V three they kind of intensified those plot holes a bit. Well, yeah. they intentionally intensified the plot holes, torched the franchise, and ran. Uh, I I I don't think that anything that happened in Danganronpa V three was an accident and we're not going to get into spoilers here because Mm -hmm. frankly i know that a lot of people have not played v3 yet uh, including somehow (laughs) so i recommend doing that and not looking up really much of anything about the game beforehand but i i don't have any cause to think that this is going to be disappointing the the aesthetic is like Danganronpa meets Akudama Drive, which is 2Q's, uh, you know, other more recent property, the the anime that they made a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It looks really exciting to me. Like, it it does look like they're trying to retread the Danganronpa ground, which is kind of frustrating given the artistic decisions that they made in V3, made mm-hmm. it very much seem like they wanted to move away from making these games. But at the same time, I haven't been disappointed by the game studio behind this yet, and I don't think that I will be anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So it looks cool. I'm excited. No, that that's uh, that that's a good thing to be excited about, and I'm I'm happy that the the team is still getting you know work and paid, and you know. I, I, now I'm interested to go back to, to go to, to V3 and see how they uh, kill the franchise. Mm-hmm. It's and... it's it's spectacular. <laughs> um, which um, yeah, way, have we talked about Ryza yet? Uh no, I don't think so. It is your turn. Do you want to talk about Ryza three? Yeah, let's talk about Rise of Three. Uh, 
You so, mean you mean the girl with the great with, with the great like bottom, according to the Famitsu writer? Bro, Riza is like, like I'm looking at the screenshots now. Like I'm sure, like her breasts grew three sizes since the last game. <laughs> oh my god, that, that's it's the insane. Ichiro Oda effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Like, like, I'm just looking at it, I'm like, man, like, is it just me? Am I being, like, kind of creepy? Because it feels like she got more top-heavy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm a big fan of Ryza. Um, it, it was one of the first Atelier games that I could vibe with uh, because it overhauled the system and is very beginner-friendly. Uh, mostly because uh, they pull the thing that Ryza herself doesn't know anything about alchemy. So when it's teaching the player, uh, it, it comes off as very genuine, as that she's just learning it for the first time. Mm. Um, and Ryza 3 looks interesting because it looks like the key mechanic is going to be keys, ironically. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I did hear it was that on the press release. Mm -hmm. Um. It's going to be a bunch of keys. It looks like it imbues her attacks uh, with different effects. So I'm excited to see how it goes. And and it, they made it sound like this was going to be the the end of the Ryza series. That that is that is what the subtitle implies. Yeah. Um. And I I did I think they did say that this would be the final game in the trilogy. They've never done more than three games in in an Atelier series. Yeah. So yeah. yeah no. That, that I makes would sense. have to imagine they'll move on from here. Uh, I'm just separate, like obviously these games don't don't take like a ton to make. I'm just surprised that it's already we're already at a third one uh, mm -hmm. in in uh, you know the span of just the Nintendo Switch generation. Yeah, but yeah. I'm excited for the Atelier fans. I guess I I have not really been able to get into these games because they never drop in price uh so well, well what's funny is that riser actually does uh riser frequently goes on sale for like 20 bucks 25 bucks yeah um, yeah I think and I that's a Ryza that's a five-year-old game now like i think that should be going for like 10 15 dollars that that is like a hope and a pipe dream and like a thing like for as long as those yes. games are like yes 20 bucks is not bad price And I think that that's pretty much... Oh, yeah, I, I guess we could talk. Yeah, I don't think it's worth talking, but hey... Oh, it's because it's a Koei Tecmo game. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna it's gonna come. Yay, whoop-de-woo. Wait, what are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, just just so... Yes, I am aware, Kirby Wee is gonna be remain to the Switch. Oh, Ooh. yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. cool, I guess... I mean Kirby like, is, is a I, I, I'm game. appreciating the Kirby the the Kirby uh Renaissance I've already used that word this podcast, damn it. Right. Um the the Kirby renewal rebirth that that we're that we're getting right now. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, it it's it's more Nintendo games for kindergartners. Um I don't I don't really know how else to put it. I, I hear more news of Nintendo making games that are that are absolutely catered towards people that are twenty years younger than me and and but only are are really especially valuable to adults for nostalgia value and see and, and that that one's funny because we're talking about a series that frequently has eldritch horrors yep in its in its scale you're like oh yeah it's for babies I'm like but at the same time they're they're all notoriously easy games oh well, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm waiting for that's one of the reasons I'm waiting for Metroid Prime 4 is because I want a Nintendo game that like feels like it's made for someone that grew up playing Nintendo, you know, 20 years ago, as opposed to someone that's in the first grade now. I get that that's weird of me to say, but Nintendo's mm -hmm. weird allergy to the phrase difficulty option uh is is poisoning their well for me and it has been for a while hmm. and that's that's pretty much yeah i ran out of stuff to talk about <laughs> uh yeah you guys should you don't want to talk about samurai maiden 
Um, it exists. I want to talk about Rise of the Ronin. We got we we ate good on Samurai. Like like sure. as much as the farming people ate, we got Yakuza Ishin, we got Samurai Maiden, and we got Rise of the Ronin, uh, which which looks really cool. Uh, but I guess I'm just here for katanas. Am I an edge lord? Oh God! Uh, oh my God! Oh God. You, you, yeah. you well, you called me an edge lord yeah. as well. I did call you an edge lord. Uh, I think so... that I think that I had more credibility calling you an edge lord than calling myself one. I, I, I think samurai. Everyone likes samurai. I think what Colin said was that while we were out, you know, having sex, he was studying the blade. <laughs> I've been in a relationship for six years, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't come at me <laughs> I'll come out if anything i'm having sex and studying the blade <laughs> dangly bits where did this where did we trail but, um, off to um, we trail off in weird directions on this podcast. We do. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the Team Ninja game. I, I actually forgot yes, what it was. That called. is the Team Ninja game. Uh -huh. Um, Sin Duality looks interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's getting an anime. Yeah. Um, it's about yeah, it's about uh, uh a brother uh protecting a girl from from the inside of a mech. Uh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My little sister can't possibly need this much protection in a dystopian future. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pacific well. Drive looked really cool. That that's a that's a brand new game from uh, one of the studios that Sony acquired this year, uh, and it looks like an absolute trip. Uh, it was really funny when uh, the when the trailer started, I was at work, but I was in a group chat with a bunch of people that were watching live and someone was like, is this Alan Wake? And I was like, this doesn't look like Alan Wake. <laughs> Speaking of Overwatch, you're going to get some new coasters soon because they're going to shut down the Overwatch 1 servers October 2nd. So literally all disc copies of Overwatch 1 will, will turn into coasters. Wait, did they, they actually announced that they're... I think yeah, the last I heard was that they were... Just gonna try to keep both games alive that was never gonna happen listen okay here's the thing that's happening right now okay. um over so a new female overwatch character was announced three days ago okay. as of this recording okay and rule 64 of this character has not trended on twitter yet <gasps> i'm pretty sure the oh, overwatch no. fan base is basically done um oh, no. and I think Blizzard is very aware that if they give people the option to stay on Overwatch 1, Overwatch 2 is going to belly flop. Well, so yeah. really the only card they have in their deck to try and hold on to people is to force them to play Overwatch 2 uh, and engage with all of these shitty new monetization bullshit tactics. Yeah. All the characters are going to be part of a battle pass now. That sucks. Uh yeah. That does uh, this 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 game is jumping off of a cliff. Whatever excitement I had for it before immediately died as soon as I heard that. Mm -hmm. I recognize that they have to make money. However, locking characters behind battle passes inherently unbalances the game and gives Blizzard incentive to make those characters powerful so that people get frustrated when they die to them and are like, oh, they're in the battle pass right now. I should go buy that. Yeah. It's 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 bad. It's uh, bad. I I I I put hundreds of hours into Overwatch One. Yep. I I am coming. I have a whole shelf of Overwatch stuff behind me. Yep. I am immensely disappointed. Yeah, and not, that's not what to go. Is that most battle passes require you to play every day, uh, for at least five to six hours a day. So to, to get them completed. So yeah, it's like impossible. Or I'm sure you will be able to pay to skip levels on the battle pass. Oh, that's sure. a given. That's gonna be a given. This is the it's the Fortnite model. Yeah. They 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 looked at Fortnite. We're like, I want to do that. But mm -hmm. what they don't understand is that their fan base 
has just been chipped away and away and away and away. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't uh, the content drought after after uh, Overwatch 2 was announced, then yeah. it was the sexual abuse allegations at yeah. Blizzard. And if it wasn't those, then it was the Overwatch League and the ridiculous amount of pandering to the esports crowd at the expense of the casual crowd. Yeah. It This... Overwatch's death is a death by a thousand cuts. Yeah. Um, and as someone that was a really dedicated fan, it really sucks to watch. But yeah, I I'm pretty sure Overwatch Two is going to to flop very hard. I think it's going yeah. to it, it's it's going to be a high profile free to play game. So it's going to happen like all of these other high profile games that are at least initially free to play, like like the original release of Fall Guys when it came out on PS Plus. It's going to be you know, big for a couple of months, and then we're all going to forget about it. Yeah, I, I think it, the same thing with multiverses. The hype for that has been dying down. So on that on that note, unfortunately, <laughs> we are out of time. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I got to do my I wrap up. Um, <laughs> sorry to end on a downer. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. I have. I'm. I'm passionate about this topic. Uh, mm -hmm. and we all know what that does to me. <laughs> so I want to thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Straight Pixels podcast. We post at this point every Wednesday on your podcast app of choice uh, and on the Noise Pixel YouTube channel. Uh, what did you guys think of the announcements? Is there one that we didn't mention that you wanted us to and wanted to know what we think about it? What was your favorite thing that was announced during the Nintendo Direct? Did you think that the state of play was bad? Because I didn't. I ate. <laughs> Let us know in the comments on YouTube. If there's anything you'd like, to talk, you'd like us to talk about on a future episode, you can leave a comment under this video or you can talk to us on Twitter. You can find me, Colin, at, at the Arcane Ranger, uh, Nate at, at less than Nathan, and Ryuji at, at, at Ryuji Blades, right? Yes. Am I still yes. correct on that? I, I I have all of them memorized, but sometimes they get they get fuzzy. Mm -hmm. Um or the site itself at, at Noisy Pixel News. The Straight Pixels podcast is brought to you by Noisy Pixel. Uh Noisy Pixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to bring you the latest news, reviews, previews, podcasts, and more. Uh please come join our community Discord server and talk dirty with us. Talk nerdy with us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I said oh. it wrong. But you can talk dirty with us too. I will. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get it gets real parasocial up in here. Oh, yeah. You should, you should, you should see the way that they talk about Azario. Oh, uh, yeah. And please like, subscribe, and follow to keep up with our future content. And we will see you guys next week. Have a good one.